why without the decreases is, does, does beta um, increase? Or if you want to see when alpha is really small, the beta gets really large if you want to make this as a, as a uh, diagram. I, I think I provided the class with the slide on, on the course compass or the St. John Central. These, all the slides from the chapter should be available. Before we discuss the relationship between alpha and beta, let's define alpha. Alpha is the probability of making a type 1 error. That's alpha, which of course means rejecting a 0 when a 0 is true. And the beta is the, not the opposite, but the flip side of that, rejecting the h1 when the h1 is true. And I think the easiest way to demonstrate this is by going back to the spinner assignment where we actually worked through a series of different alphas until we came up with the perfect alpha. Perfect in the sense that it gave us 5%. And there we were dealing with the hypothesis testing of is the average of the population of random numbers truly like it's supposed to be, namely 4.5, or is it messed up in some respect, namely it's not 4.5. And we took a sample of five numbers got the average, and we spent a lot of our energy trying to work out, not the z here, there should be an x bar here, uh, what is the mathematical properties of averages coming out of a perfectly good table? If 8-0 is true, under 8-0, if the table really is a good table and the average is truly 4.5, then we discussed in chapter 7 that the average of the averages should still be 4.5, and we know from chapter 7 as well, without going into it right now, the standard error of the mean is sigma over n, which in the case of the random number table, sigma is 287. We picked a small sample of five, which came out to 128. What we tried to do for homework, which uh, one guess how many people actually did it yet, you pick a pair of numbers, and you say, let's, let's say that's our acceptance region. So let's say you just pick whatever, you know, we picked, I think, three and six, for example. You pick three and six as a, just a guess. And this was the do not reject region. And this was the reject region. And if you get bigger, lower than three, you also have to decide to you decide that you're going to consider that reject a zero. So then we said, is this a good pair of numbers? So we, we evaluate it by actually calculating the type one error. So we calculate how often does x bar come out lower than three, or does x bar come out bigger than six? And that, of course, is a calculation which we've done many times over in terms of chapter seven in particular, even chapter six. And we ended up with a probability, and I think this came out to, I believe this came out to 12%, and 12%. For alpha, in that case, came out to 24%. And we said 24% of the time, making a mistake is not a good situation, so how can we improve it? So we said, let's make the alpha smaller by making the boundaries further apart, and then we tried after a whole bunch of different iterations, two and seven. So we tried two and seven. So we said, how about this? Well, of course, by making the boundaries further apart, the, the area of rejection, the chance of being bigger than, lower than two, and being bigger than seven, it got to be a smaller area, a smaller percentage, a smaller alpha, and therefore it turned out, in fact, by two, two and seven, it turned out to be five percent. The question we then asked ourselves, or I asked you, is why don't we get it down to three percent, or two percent, or one percent? And a few people pointed out that if you make these rejection regions really, really, you make, make it from one to eight, make it from one to eight, make it really easy to accept the A0, so you're making it really easy to accept, because the acceptance region gets really wide and generous and, and if you make it really easy to reject the A0, you're hardly ever going to reject it. If you hardly ever reject it, then you're going to have a small alpha, because alpha is how often you reject it. So it makes a lot of sense by making the region really, really liberal, you're going to have a small alpha. What happens when you make the region really, really liberal? Making it really easy to accept the A0. Remember, this is the accept A0 region, essentially. By making it really easy to accept the A0, what are you doing? Every time you accept the A0, what are you actually doing at the same time? You're rejecting the H1. So by making the alpha really, really small, making it really, really easy to accept the H0, what happens to the, the chance of rejecting the H1? Remember, accepting the H0 is the same as rejecting the H1. Just think about it for a second. Reje accepting the H0 is the same. So you're making it really easy to reject the H1, even in those situations where the H1 happens to be the true answer. So if it's making it really easy to reject the H1, what happens to beta? It happens more often, so it goes up. That's the answer. The other guy, but that's the answer. I hope. And the simple one, making a little diagram, you can make it much easier. Yes. So we can just say they're universally related. No. My question will be why they're universally related. You can't tell me because they're universally related. You got to say what I just said. When you make alpha easier to accept, beta goes up. 
So you make a type one error. When you, when you make the a zero easier to accept, right. which means your type, your alpha will be going down, right. then it's going to be easier to reject the H1, which leads you will make means your your type two error will go will go up, will happen more often, which means that beta goes up. I mean, you left out a couple of steps here, but that's, you've got to add those couple of steps in when you have it. I mean, it's not, it's not a 25-page essay to answer the question. You can do it in like a few lines, but you, can, you can't do it in three words. You've got to do it in a few lines. Can you write the lines down? Could I write it down or you write it down? Yeah. Yeah. I, write, I might write it down. So when you make zero. the interval of accepting a zero bigger, no, you have to have you said again, if you make the acceptance region bigger, you're making it easier easier to reject the H1. That's the key to it, which people refuse to write down. By making the acceptance region more liberal further apart, then you're making it easier and easier to reject the H1. When you reject the H1 under all conditions, including the conditions when they're supposed to be accepted, you're making the, the type 2 error with a beta. Okay, so basically the key phrase is which you, make the, you make it easier to reject the H1. When you make it easier to, to, to accept the A0, at the same time you're making it easier to reject the H1. So that probability has to go up.